So if you were actually measuring just the spit, you wouldn't have seen any changes. The study would have said, eh, we didn't find anything. The blood changes in both. They both increase testosterone and cortisol. So today's theme, spit versus blood. Still talking about testosterone. I've got a paper here from 2010. Now this woman, one of the authors on this paper, she gave one of the top TED Talks of all time. And her name is Amy Cuddy. You can look it up. It's a great TED Talk. It's, it's about power posing, you know, like where you put your hands on your hips, put your head up a little bit, power pose. This paper is in the Association for the Physiological Science Journal. It's kind of an obscure journal, but it's called Power Posing. Brief nonverbal displays affect neuroendocrine levels. Endocrine system, remember, means hormones. Affects these hormone levels and risk tolerance. All right, so in that TED Talk, she talks about how they had people sit in, a post in, in various postures, whether that would be some kind of a hunched over posture, weak posture, or a power, powerful posture, or maybe stand, I can't remember, but whatever. And in these power poses, the testosterone went up 20%, she says, and the cortisol went down 10%. And in the weak poses, in the submissive poses, where people are crossing their legs, putting their hand on their neck, whatever. Um, testosterone decreased 25% and cortisol increased about 15%, she says. And it's important to note that she was just testing saliva. They're spitting in a tube. Remember the theme, spit versus blood. And she says here in the paper, can postures cause power? The results of this study confirmed our prediction. See, it's kind of a weird way of writing a science paper. You don't usually say, we had a prediction, and then we went out and confirmed it with science. Usually you want to keep a more open mind and be more open to e any weird serendipity or weird results that you have rather than trying to confirm a prediction. But anyways, this, this study confirmed our prediction. High power posers experienced elevations in testosterone, like I said, decreases in cortisol, which a lot of people think are related. We're going to talk about that today. Low power poses exhibited the exact opposite pattern. They had 26 females and only 16 males in the study. Really small study. And here's the actual graph, which has huge error bars. So tiny study, huge error bars. And in the TED Talk, she doesn't show the error bar, so it looks really significant. I got really excited when I watched it, and I think a lot of people do. Well, just watch the clip. So... This is what we did. We decided to uh, bring people into the lab and run a little experiment. And these people adopted for two minutes either high power poses or low power poses. And I'm just going to show you five of the poses, although they took on only two. So here's one. This one is very low power. When you're touching your neck, you're really kind of protecting yourself. So this is what happens. They come in, they spit into a vial. We, for two minutes, say, you need to do this or this. They don't look at pictures of the poses. We don't want to prime them with a the concept of power. We want them to be feeling power, right? So two minutes they do this. We then ask them, how powerful do you feel on a series of items? And then we give them an opportunity to gamble. And then we take another saliva sample. That's it. That's the whole experiment. So this is what we find. Here's what we find on testosterone. From their baseline when they come in, High power people experience about a 20% increase, and low power people experience about a 10% decrease. So again, two minutes and you get these changes. Here's what you get on cortisol. High power people experience about a 25% decrease, and the low power people experience about a 15% increase. So two minutes lead to these hormonal changes that configure your brain. Okay, now what's interesting about that clip is, as soon as she said, they tested saliva testosterone, I automatically thought, why aren't they taking their blood? They should be taking the blood. It's probably a more accurate measure. I Google searched this, this was a few years ago, and sure enough, the co-author on her own study that she's citing there says she doesn't even believe the results of that study. She doesn't even believe it, the co-author, because they couldn't repeat the study. It wasn't very repeatable. 
look at this, fast forward 2017, the comprehensive results in social psychology journal, another obscure journal, but still it's a study. This paper is called Embodied Power, Testosterone, and Overconfidence as a Casual Pathway to Risk-Taking. What do they say? Previous work, aka that TED Talk you just saw, into high power versus low power physical postures caused increases in testosterone and some other things. We attempted to replicate this study. We were unable to replicate the findings of the original study and found no evidence for that. Wow, number one, again, more, way more recent. And even the co-author way back from 2010 from that original study didn't really believe it. So what's going on? Well, you know, within two minutes, there's probably not a testosterone change. And if there is, detect detecting it by spitting is probably not a good measure. But let's talk about testosterone versus cortisol, that interaction, because that's complicated. A lot of people say if you're stressed out, you're lowering your testosterone. I want to know if that's true. You probably do too. Let's start with a sauna. Let's go back to saunas. We've been talking a lot about saunas. Then we talked about cold water. You know, cold water we saw lowers testosterone. Cold water immersion, jumping in ice bath. What about saunas? Scandinavian Physiological Journal, 1986. I've got a paper here. Um, they did one hour twice a day for seven days in a sauna. This is again Scandinavia, only in Scandinavia. They tested cortisol, they tested thyroid hormones, they tested testosterone um, before, during, and after these massive sauna treatments. They found no significant changes in thyroid hormones, T TSH, testosterone, no changes in testosterone from the sauna. At least they're not going down, right? With the cold water, it goes down. So that's good. So it doesn't alter your testosterone. But cortisol decreases. That's awesome. So your stress hormone, the stress hormone cortisol, lowers with sauna use, another benefit of sauna. But that also kind of makes you wonder, are cortisol and testosterone really so interconnected? Are they so inversely related? I don't think they are. It's really a mess in the literature. And you get a lot of you know, people that think really strongly about this, but I don't. I don't think that's there's I don't think it's valid to be really entrenched in the idea that if you're lowering your cortisol, you're increasing your testosterone, and vice versa. 2017, got a paper here in the Journal of Clinical Lab Analysis. It's called The Utility of Salivary Testosterone and Cortisol Concentration Measures for Assessing the Stress Responses of Junior Athletes During a Sporting Competition. And this brings up the idea of stress. Um, so this study examines salivary testosterone and cortisol. They had 71 participants, both males and females. The competition, these are sports, so somewhat of a stressor, promoted an increase in blood testosterone concentrations, about 10% increase, in males and females. Females were about 13% increase. So both males and females increased testosterone with cortisol also rising in females um, and in males, 23% in males, 37% in females. So cortisol rises, testosterone rises. No changes in salivary, testosterone, or cortisol were identified. So if you were actually measuring just the spit, you wouldn't have seen any changes. The study would have said, eh, we didn't find anything. The blood changes in both. They both increase, testosterone and cortisol. So it's in conclusion, it says a high intensity competition promoted competition promoted a predictable stress induced rise in testosterone and cortisol. So <clears throat> that's interesting to, you know, sports are a form of stress, but there's so many different forms of stress and that's where you got to be precise. And I think that's where the scientific literature gets messy. Here's a paper from 2003 from the Society of Behavioral Medicine Journal. It's called Intra Individual Variation in recent stress exposure as a moderator of cortisol and testosterone levels. They were looking at 72 firefighters. They did saliva and blood checks. Blood samples were drawn. In contrast to expectations, <laughs> as stress decreased throughout the year, remember these are firefighter stress is based on what their activities are. Um, salivary cortisol increased and testosterone decreased. So testosterone was going down as stress went down. 
Um, these results, though in contrast to the orthodoxy concerning the association between stress and cortisol, are supported by findings in a number of other studies and may constitute down-regulation of cortisol following an increase in stress exposure. Again, I don't know if I believe that either, but it depends on the stress. Well, I mean, basically what they're saying is, you know, stress, testosterone, cortisol, they kind of found the opposite of the previous study we we're talking about. I mean, it's a mess, again, and it definitely depends on the stress. You know, athletic stress, yeah, it's kind of a stress, but, you know, it increases your testosterone. It's a different kind of stress than something a firefighter maybe would have. You know, fighting a big forest fire, you know, that's a more negative effect. That's a more negative stress, I mean. Here's another example, last example. 2018, the American Pain Society Journal. How'd you like to be an editor on that one? Yeah, I'm on the Pain Society Journal. Um, chronic pain, um, they were studying. Well, let me look at the title here. The title is called Opposing Roles of Estradiol estrogen and testosterone opposing roles of estrogen and testosterone on stress induced visceral hypersensitivity in rats so they're using rats why why did i find this interesting why did i pull this one out because they're throwing them in water and forcing them to swim and getting this emergency life and death response so that's kind of an extreme form of stress that's a really negative form of stress in most for the most part in humans and us stress is all up in our head we're generating our own stress. We're not really in a life and death situation, but we kind of mentally put ourselves in these weird, stressful, you know, real negative stress situations, and it's all mental. And you gotta learn to kind of push that out of your head. But, so this stress-induced visceral hypersensitivity was induced, again, they're throwing these rats in the water. Um, it's a scary situation for the rats. What do they find? Estradiol, estrogen, facilitates this response and testosterone decreases stress induced visceral hypersensitivity testosterone decreases this stress response estrogen increases it so rather than you know looking at it they're kind of switching the paradigm right so they're putting them in they're, they're looking and saying look more estrogen means more stress more testosterone means less stress in these life and death stress situations and that's an interesting way of looking at it, and that's probably the way you should look at it. You don't want low testosterone because you won't be able to handle stress as well. It's not so much that stress is lowering your testosterone, although it might. The scientific literature is such a mess, and it depends on the type of stress, and it depends on intra-individual variation. It's complicated. But for sure, I don't think power poses you know, are increasing testosterone within two minutes, frankly. I don't believe that. And you've got to be careful on this topic. I also don't think cortisol and testosterone are inversely related or something. I think if your cortisol goes up, that doesn't mean your testosterone is going down. So it's a mess. Testosterone, the whole topic can be messy, but you know, you've got to be wary. Watch out for these studies that are looking at salivary. They're looking at spit and measuring testosterone. And just watch out in the field in general. It's a mess. <laughs>